に言われたんです。息子に言われたんです。最近しょぼくれてる。最近しょぼくれてる。最近しょぼくれてる。最近でもしたら。それで、それで。About a third of the way into Kashi Miike's 1999 J Horror audition, a widower is talked into hosting a film audition in a sleazy attempt to find his next wife. Having already picked the girl he intends to propose to before the audition, Ioma sits still, perfectly still, waiting patiently like a predator. Ioma's choice is brought in, Asami. She politely introduces herself and sits down upon request. As Asami sits woefully still, tranquil and meditative, you wonder: Is Ioma auditioning Asami, or is Asami auditioning Ioma? Alarmingly, both are each other's dream candidates. Ioma is a mild-mannered man, a loving man. His wife, who he truly loved, has faded to memory, and encouraged by his son, he seeks a new one. He's good-willed, opposed to the idea of an audition, feeling like a criminal. Yet. He still does it. He may not be outwardly sexist, but he's dismissive of women. The females in his life exist as commodities. They're fish to eat, cleaners that exist exclusively for cleaning, and secretaries that can be ignored even after they've been intimate. His dead wife is nothing but a decorative picture, and he thinks he can window shop for a new wife, as if the traits she possesses are infinitely more important than the person she is. Yet, for all this. Ioma shows remorse for his actions. He knows the audition is wrong. He feels like a criminal. What I'm trying to say here is that Ioma isn't an awful man. He's not an abusive sexist who despises women. He's kind. He treats women with a respect that he believes to be healthy. For all intents and purposes, Ioma is a good man caught in a set of subconscious societal values. He isn't dismissive of women because he is a monster. He's dismissive of them because he exists in a male-dominated society. Ioma has been raised by these values, and he doesn't understand the capacity of his ignorance. Yet opposite Ioma sits Asami. Asami, so meek that the air around her freezes, does nothing of her own accord. She sits when asked to. She answers when asked to. She seems vulnerable. Her clearly damaged past invites Ioma to feel like a protector. She's quiet and reserved, thoughtful and pensive. She may seem off kilter to the audience, who know of the arc the film is moving on, but to Ioma, she's the perfect candidate. It's this dilemma that Takeshi Miyake puts at the heart of audition that catches you so off guard. Nothing about audition has been suggestive of the nightmarish fever dream to come. It almost feels in the vein of an ozu as its romantic drama tones move smoothly along. It's not until this moment, when you finally meet Asami, that you know something is off. Her unnerving stillness sends shivers down your spine. It can't all be bad, though. Surely the power still remains in Ioma's hands, which it does, but not for long. Takashi Miyake isn't exactly known for restraint. He produces so many films that will give you as much whiplash as auditions ending, and his topics haven't exactly been the most conservative. He's a filmmaker known for pushing boundaries and presenting such idiosyncratic imagery that the word restraint feels alien. Yet, with audition, Miyake does something entirely different. He takes his time to build themes, going deeper and deeper and deeper. <laughs> It's reserved and restrained. Audition shows a level of filmmaking akin to the likes of greats. At the heart of audition is this power struggle, the cat and mouse game between Ioma and Asami, as more and more of Asami's true life is revealed. Except, is it Asami's true life, or the darkest, most vulnerable parts of Ioma's masculinity? Here, in this Lynchian fever dream, is where the beauty and mastering of craft lay. Miike begins to edit the film in such a disorientating way that you begin to lose sight of Ioma's true reality. Scenes at bars suddenly change location or background. Extras appear and disappear. Ioma has dreams in the hotel with Asami that he couldn't possibly have had. He sees elements of her life he was never exposed to, which begs the question: Is this vicious collage of images that dominates the final act the truth, or? Is it simply just an extension of his guilt? 
Taken on a literal level, Audition is the revenge story of an abused girl, one that's been restrained from being human since she was little by men. She's grown up with violence and torture shaping her life, and subsequently uses those same violent urges to quell the plight of men. All in all, it's a feminist revenge story for the ages, and an idea that's been consistently overutilized since, but I think there's something deeper going on in Audition. Fundamentally, it may be a plain revenge story on the surface, but the reality is Ioma's nightmarish end is a culmination of visuals and imagery that he was not privy to. He never knew what Asami's childhood looked like and he never understood what she went through. These depraved visions are more images of his subconscious and extensions of his guilt-ridden heart. Seeing his wife at the dinner table falls into the same playbook. Ioma goes down a deep path of guilt, finding blame in other men for Asami's subservient stillness. It concerns him, it frightens him. Ioma wanted, as he put it, a performer that's trained. Yet, when it comes down to it, Ioma cannot cope with the guilt of having such an incredibly objectifying relationship. He loved his wife and very clearly values family. Audition's ending finds Ioma's roles reversed as the guilt finally boils over after sleeping with Asami so easily. Ioma questionably dreams of the brutal ending to the film, an ending that finds his roles reversed with Asami, laying still, motionless, paralyzed by Asami as men paralyze women, a plaything for pain and pleasure as Asami sits above inserting things deeper and deeper and deeper. objectified in every sense of the word until his son, his family, a reminder of the love for his wife snaps him out of this hellish nightmare by killing Asami. Yet, the real nightmare was lying beside him the whole time. He may have dreamed this hellish landscape of paralyzing objectification, but for Asami, that dream is only all too real and Ioma lays next to her knowing that he's the demon of her nightmare. Thank <laughs> you.